When we think of Autobahn, Kraftwerk's 1974 electronic masterpiece, we imagine endless highways, robotic rhythms, and a sound that shaped the future of music. But beneath the layers of synths and mechanical beats lies a surprising influence. The Peach Boys, pioneers of American pop, known for their lush harmonies and surf anthems. So how did Kraftwerk, these electronic pioneers and trailblazers from Dusseldorf, Germany, draw inspiration from the quintessential California band? Today, we're going to dive into how the warmth of the Pacific coast bled into the cold precision of the German Autobahn. Hi, I'm Andy Fenstermaker, host of Poetic Wax, a weekly music history series and now audio podcast where I dig into the record collection I've been building since the 1990s and explore the sometimes little known history of a band, album, or song within. To truly understand the significance of Kraftwerk's Autobahn, we need to take a look at the cultural backdrop of the 1970s in Germany. The country was still rebuilding its identity in the shadow of World War II. Grappling with both its Nazi past and the rapid modernization of post-war economics, Kraftwerk's music emerged as a response to this, a deliberate attempt to create something that felt uniquely German, yet forward-looking. By 1974, Kraftwerk had already built a reputation as avant-garde musicians, experimenting with sounds that reflected the post-industrial world around them. Kraftwerk from 1970, Kraftwerk II from 1972, and Ralph and Florian from 1973 were more abstract, but with Autobahn, they aimed to create something more accessible, a new kind of pop music, but with their distinct mechanical edge. Ralph Hodder and Florian Schneider, the masterminds behind the band, were fascinated by technology, the future, and yes, cars. The idea of Autobahn was to capture the feeling of cruising down Germany's highways, but it needed to be more than just a sterile soundscape. Ralph and Florian envisioned a new kind of music that would reflect Germany's technological future, free from the American and British rock and roll influence that dominated airwaves at that time. Autobahn symbolized more than just a road. It was a metaphor for the country's future, a sleek, modern vision of mobility and progress. As music journalist David Stubbs puts it, Kraftwerk's mission was to reclaim a sense of national pride and identity through sound, but without succumbing to nationalism or nostalgia for a darker past. The Autobahn itself, a network of high-speed highways, was a powerful symbol of German engineering and efficiency, but it also carried associations with the Third Reich having been expanded under Hitler's regime. In reclaiming the Autobahn as a symbol of the future, Kraftwerk repurposed it into a futuristic utopian image of urban technology. The band's aesthetic, cold, mechanical, yet still somewhat oddly human, mirrored this dichotomy of progress and historical baggage. Their decision to adopt a robotic, almost corporate look, complete with suits and ties, was also a deliberate artistic choice. Kraftwerk distanced themselves from the sex, drugs, and rock and roll ethos of Western pop, presenting themselves instead as the sound of modernity and technological progress. This cultural recontextualization is what made Autobahn more than just a song about driving. It became a landmark in redefining German identity through art and music. Here's Cutter in an interview from 2004. We wanted to make a road movie for the ears. It was very important for us to make music that was not just abstract, but had a human aspect to it. This is where the Beach Boys come in. Known for their good vibrations and carefree tunes about surfing and cruising, the Beach Boys crafted the perfect soundtrack for the open road. And while they might seem worlds apart from Kraftwerk's electronic precision, there was one key link. Fun, fun, fun. A hit single from 1964, featuring Chuck Berry-inspired guitar riffs and a soaring melody about the joy of driving. 
Here's Ralph reflecting in an interview from 1975. We always liked the Beach Boys because they made music for the car, and we wanted to do something similar, but in our own way, more technological, more European. Kraftwerk admired how the Beach Boys used music to paint a picture of the open road. And it wasn't just the lyrical content about driving that inspired them. It was the feeling that the Beach Boys captured. Their music created an experience, a sense of motion, and that was exactly what Kraftwerk wanted to emulate with Autobahn. The warmth of the Beach Boys' harmonies may seem at odds with Kraftwerk's cold, minimalistic approach, but underneath they shared the same goal, to create music that would transport you. The connection between these two worlds becomes clear when you listen closely to the vocal selection of Autobahn. The song's main vocal refrain... which translates as we drive, drive, drive on the Autobahn. This echoes the cadence and simplicity of Beach Boys lyrics like Fun, 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 or I Get Around. Florian Schneider himself confirmed this when he said in a 1975 interview with Rolling Stone, we were thinking of the Beach Boys when we made Autobahn. We wanted to capture the feeling of freedom on the road just like they did, but with our own sound. Now, Kraftwerk just didn't copy the Beach Boys. Instead, they took the concept of road music and reimagined it through a European lens. The warmth of the Beach Boys' harmonies was replaced by the sterile pulse of a Moog synthesizer, but the emotional core was still there. The thrill of movement, the freedom of the road. During the production of Autobahn, Kraftwerk initially tried to capture the experience of driving by recording sounds directly from a car. They attempted a somewhat unconventional approach, placing a microphone outside the window of a Volkswagen while driving along the highway to capture the ambient sounds of the road. However, this method proved ineffective. The wind and other environmental factors made it impossible to get the desired effect. Undeterred, the band turned to their synthesizers to recreate these road noises through sound design, blending various electronic instruments to simulate the hum and rhythm of the Autobahn. This shift from organic to synthesized sound added to the futuristic and mechanical feel of the track, ultimately enhancing its atmosphere and aligning it with Kraftwerk's vision of a modern technological aesthetic. Their ingenuity in crafting synthetic sounds helped the title track of Autobahn become an iconic blend of electronic music and a conceptual road journey, all without relying on the direct recordings of nature they had initially attempted. Furthermore, the track is incredibly long, at a whopping 22 minutes and 3 seconds, covering the entire first side of the record on vinyl. This extended runtime allows the band to explore the experience of a road journey in a way that felt immersive and cinematic. According to Ralph Hutter, the length was essential to capture the expansive feeling of driving on the German Autobahn, with the repetitive rhythms evoking the endless motion of a car cruising along a highway. Quite contrary to the Beach Boys' short pop tunes, by using the length of the track to build gradually, Autobahn transitions through various musical phases, from ambient soundscapes to more rhythmic sections, mirroring the natural ebb and flow of a road trip. This extended duration was a bold move at the time, as most pop and rock tracks were much shorter, like 10% of the actual ending length. But it helped Kraftwerk stand apart as pioneers in creating music that could serve as a road movie for the ears. While the 22-minute version of Autobahn on the album was an immersive, meditative experience, Kraftwerk's breakthrough into mainstream success, to no surprise, came thanks to a much shorter version, a three-minute radio edit. Let, I mean, let's face it, mainstream radio has never been exactly friendly to lengthy experimental tracks, so the band reworked it with producers to condense the essence of Autobahn to a radio-friendly format. 
This edit hit the airwaves in 1975 and became a surprise hit, charting in at number 11 in the UK and breaking into the top 40 in the United States. The radio edit allowed them to tap into a much broader audience, bringing their brand of futuristic electronic music to listeners who were used to rock and pop. This commercial success was significant not just for craft work, but for electronic music as a whole. For the first time, an electronic song had broken through to the mainstream, proving that the synthesizer could actually hold its own next to guitars and drums. Kraftwerk's success with Autobahn signaled the beginning of a new era, where electronic music wasn't just a niche, but a legitimate force in pop culture. The band would go on to solidify this status with later albums like Trans Europe Express and The Man Machine, but it was Autobahn's radio edit that first put them on the map as pioneers of a new sound. Autobahn wasn't just a conceptual triumph, it fundamentally changed the landscape of popular music. Released in November of 1974, Autobahn was one of the first albums to fully integrate synthesizers, drum machines, and vocoders into its core laying the groundwork for what would become electronic music. Before Kraftwerk, the use of electronic instruments was largely regulated to experimental or avant-garde music, but Autobahn bridged the gap between experimental and mainstream. Artists across genres picked up on this. The album's repetitive, minimalist rhythms inspired early pioneers of techno and house music, particularly in Detroit and Chicago. In the UK, bands like New Order and Depeche Mode directly credited Kraftwerk as an influence, adopting the synthetic textures of Autobahn and pushing them further into new wave and synth pop. In fact, I touch on some of New Order's incorporation of these elements in my episode recounting the story of Blue Monday, and that would be a good one to check out next, by the way. Daft Punk, perhaps the most visible heirs of Kraftwerk's legacy, in modern times, often spoke about how Autobahn and Kraftwerk's subsequent work shaped their own use of electronic instrumentation. And it wasn't just electronic artists. The influence of Kraftwerk can be felt in hip-hop, thanks to Africa Bambata's Planet Rock, which famously sampled Kraftwerk's Trans Europe Express. Music historian Simon Reynolds once remarked, Kraftwerk didn't just inspire the future of electronic music, they inspired the entire future of music. The influence of Kraftwerk's Autobahn would echo far beyond the 1970s. They laid the foundation for modern electronic music, from techno to synth pop, and even influenced artists who might surprise you. David Bowie famously credited Kraftwerk as a major inspiration during his Berlin trilogy. But Autobahn stands as a unique testament to the power of cross-pollinization in music, how a German electronic band could be inspired by the Californian sunshine of the Beach Boys and create something that feels somehow both mechanical yet kind of human. Both Audubon and the Beach Boys music celebrate the idea of travel, albeit in very different cultural contexts. The Beach Boys often evoked images of California's open roads, the freedom of driving, and surf culture, embodying a youthful, optimistic America. Similarly, Autobahn is about driving as a form of escape and freedom, but here it's set against the backdrop of the German highway system and a post-industrial society. This theme of mobility, whether it's through California freeways or the German Autobahn, connects the two bands conceptually. As musicologist Mark Pendergrass notes, Autobahn captures, quote, the very real experience of travel. But Autobahn reimagines it through Kraftwerk's futuristic mechanical sound. The contrast between the Beach Boys' lush, organic harmonies and Kraftwerk's synthesized sounds is a key aspect to this influence. While the Beach Boys use traditional instruments and their layered harmonic voices to create their sound, Kraftwerk used technology to simulate a similar kind of temperate melody. The influence lies not so much in the sonic texture, but in the philosophical approach to creating accessible, transportive music. 
For Autobahn, Kraftwerk wasn't trying to mimic the Beach Boys' exact sound, rather take their spirit of melodic pop and translate it into an electronic format. In many ways, Autobahn can be seen as a futuristic, synthetic counterpart to the Beach Boys' celebration of America. <laughs> Not to mention, the German word for driving is fahren, which sounds like fun. And the repetitive lyric, driving, 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 on the Autobahn, sung in German, sounds like fun, 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 on the Autobahn. Again, tying it directly to the Beach Boys. Next time you listen to Kraftwerk's Autobahn, remember the unexpected influence behind those driving rhythms. A little piece of California's sun-soaked sound waves found their way into the cold, metallic heart of German electronic music. It's proof that you never know where the next great idea is going to come from. This has been another episode of Poetic Wax, music history hidden in the grooves. New episodes go live each week on YouTube, on podcast platforms, and on my Substack. Next week, we take a look at another revolutionary German album from 1974, Soon Over Babaluma by Can. And I pose the question, can a popular band survive when their frontman leaves? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell so you'll get notified when new episodes go live. I'm Andy. I'll see you in the next episode.